So welcome back. So we will have our concluding lecture for this particular module, module 3 which is related to the polyatomic and diatomic molecules. So in the last lecture what I will do is I will take up some examples, problems and solve it so that we can move on to the chemical reactions in ideal gases in the next module and then further extend our studies to real gases. So the current lecture deals with the problems. So we will take up two sets of problems, some on diatomic gases and some on the thermodynamic properties of the diatomic gases. So the first problem, it says that an assumption is, one assumption that is sometimes made is that for isotopic species, okay, isotopic species, the bond length is the same in each of these species as in the vibration force constant K. Are the rotational and vibrational temperatures of hydrogen D2 and HD consistent with the assumption? So let me first tell you what do mean by isotopic species. Isotopic species means is isotopes. So when hydrogen is one of the isotope, it is deuterium, another isotope and when you have the combination of let us say a hydrogen atom and a deuterium atom, it is another isotope. So if you see in all the molecules, you have two atoms in the molecule, you have hydrogen deuterium and hydrogen connected with deuterium. So the question here is, they are asking that if these molecular weights are similar, then do they have a similar vibrational temperature and do they have a similar force constant? That is what we have to prove. Is this correct? So it says that it is same. That is what it is saying it is the same. So we have to prove it that it is the same. So for that, what we will do, we require certain values. What are those values? We need the rotational and the vibrational temperatures, okay. We need the rotational and vibrational temperature of all these gases and then what we will do, we will determine the force constant. Once we determine the force constant, we will also determine the bond length. So we will see if the bond length and force constants are equal, it means all this assumption is correct. So let us start with the what is given in the question. So, we have the three uh, species, hydrogen, then D2 and HD. So what are the rotational and vibrational temperature? Let me write here. So you will be needing this while you solve the problem. So for hydrogen it is 87.5, that is your rotational temperature, all are in Kelvin, while your vibrational temperature is 6320. It is all in Kelvin, so maybe I can just make it here, it is Kelvin. For uh, deuterium, it is 43.8, rotational temperature is 43.8, while your vibrational temperature is double 490, okay. And your HD molecule, that has a rotational temperature of 65.8 and a vibrational temperature of 5500. So these are the data which you need or which you require for solving this assumption. So now what I do, I will just start from basic. So what is the basic? It means I will try to relate both the vibrational and rotational temperature because you are given something. What is it? The rotational and the vibrational temperature. You need it to related to the known properties that is the expression for rotational and vibrational temperature. Let us write the expression for rotational temperature first then we will go to the vibrational temperature. So for rotational temperature the expression is theta r h square by 8 pi square moment of inertia i into k. Okay? This is the expression I have been teaching you in the previous lectures rotational temperature. So I can make use of the fact of the moment of inertia of a diatomic molecule is nothing but I will just separate out the values 8 square by 8 pi square k into inverse of moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of two atoms which are connected by a bond is given by your distance between the two whole square into the reduced mass. So if I want to write it down, it will be the d square into m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 where m1 m2 are the masses of the two atom. So if I want to write it down, it will be m1 m2 m1 m2 
into d square. So d here is the bond length. It is nothing but the equilibrium bond length d. Separation distance between two atoms 1 and 2 to the power m1 plus m2. Okay. So, this is the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is you want to write it down I is equal to m1 into m2 by m1 plus m2 into d square. This is the moment of inertia. So, I replace with that. Now, I need to find out d. So, I need to take d to the right hand side, keep everything in the left hand side and rearrange the equation. So, I will get d square equals to h square by 8 pi square k. So, theta r comes here okay, into m1 plus m2 by m1 m2. So, if I want to get d, you take a square root of this entire term. That is h square by 8 pi square k into theta r into m1 plus m2 by m1 m2. So, this is the expression. Now, the expression looks simple, but there is a catch here. When you write the values of m1, m2, please keep it in mind that you have to write in atomic mass unit. So, you cannot write 1 plus 1 by 1 into 1. So, that is wrong. That is where most of the students make the mistake. You should always convert this into atomic mass unit and you know what is the atomic mass unit in terms of gram. So, you should write that particular conversion. So, let me show you these calculations. I will do it for this lecture because you will have a no, you have to feel how to solve this expression because the units are not like a normal what you do a calculation. It has to be converted everything into AMU. So, all are given A and mu in atomic mass unit convert to SI in that case. So, or I can write the expression little bit some more simplification maybe. So, D, so D here is the bond length. So, I take H outside root 8 into pi into root k into 1 upon root of theta r by m1 plus m2 by m1 m2 okay why have i separate out this term because most of the terms for these different species only the term related to r and m1 m2 will change the pre term will be the same that is a constant so that's why i want to make it sure that it is all known beforehand i'll just need to substitute the value of rotation and the masses so i put down the value 6. 62 into 10 to the power of minus 34 by so if I took take root 8 it will be 2.82 into pi into root of 1.38 into 10 raised to the power of minus 23. So this is the first term. Now when you do a multiplication you keep in mind these two conversion units that is for a hydrogen atom, one atomic mass unit, one AMU is equal to 1.627 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg. Now, for hydrogen, if I want to take the exact mass, it is not one AMU, it is somewhere around 1.00784 AMU atomic mass unit. Okay, And so, it essentially translate to 1.6735 into 10 raised to the power of minus 27 kg. So, this is your mass of hydrogen. Okay. Now, similarly, mass of deuterium is equal to 2.014 amu. If this is 2.014 amu, again multiply this with 1.627, that is a conversion unit. So, you will get the mass as equal to 2.014 into 1.627 into 10 raised to the power of minus 27 kg. Well, you do not need to multiply this because if you notice the expression, the numerator and denominator, 
you will be having cancelling out the conversion unit, but the numerator will have an extra conversion unit as compared to the numerator. The denominator will have an extra unit. So, if you write down all these values, so finally what we get is this expression into, well this will be as it is 1 by theta r into m1 plus m2 by m1 m2. So, what are we getting? The final expression d is equal to 0 0.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 22 by 1 by theta r into m1 plus m2 by m1 m2. Okay? So, now we will use this expression, let us say it's expression 1 to compute the bond lengths for H2, D2 and HD. So, let us continue. So, let us say I am start with hydrogen atom or hydrogen molecule. For hydrogen, it will be 0 0.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 22. So, it is the same thing what is the, the previous equation 1. So, 1 upon the rotational temperature which is 87.5 into 1 plus 1, 2. So, I am just for the sake of a calculation, I am assuming to be 1 amu. So, it is 1 plus 1, it is 2, even though it is bit different for hydrogen atom, but in this case, I am just assuming it to be 2, that is 1 plus 1 becomes 2, m1 plus m2. And then what you will have is 1 into 1, that is 1. And then you have the conversion unit 1.6735 into 10 raised to the power of minus 27. Because if you notice, you have m1 plus m2. So, they are multiplied by this conversion unit 1.6735. And in the uh, denominator, you will have the product of two masses. So, we will have this 1.635 whole square. So, one of the factor gets cancels out and it becomes single factor of 1.6735. So, now if you solve it, you will get 0 0.2 into 10 to the power of minus 22 into 3 point, you solve it 6957 into 10 raised to the power of 12. Okay. So, this you will obtain as 0 0.7391 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. So, we have got a bond length that is 0 0.739 Armstrong because 1 Armstrong is 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. So, this is for hydrogen. Same thing we will do for deuterium D2. What is for D2? D2 is again the same thing 0 0.2 into 10 to the power of minus 22 into the square root term. What is the square root term? The square root term will be now 1 upon 43.8 that is what the rotational temperature. Then you will have 2 and you will have 2.014 here. Then multiplied by the factor 1.6. 605 into the 10 to the power of minus 27. So, this is the conversion unit. So, 2 means H and D 1 plus 1 2, but here D is 2. So, this will become 1 plus 1 2. Again, here it becomes 1 into 1 2, 2 into 2.014 into 1.6605 into 10 to the power of minus 27. So, this is D2. So, D means you have again the same thing, what you do is these values takes the place as desired by their molecular weights. So, now again you simplify 0 0.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 22 into 3.69512 10 to the power of 12. Okay. So, this becomes 0 0.739 into 10 raised to the power of minus 10 meters. There's nothing point 0 0.739 Armstrong D2. For HD, same way you do for HD, you will get D equals to 0 0.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 22 into square root, then 1 upon the rotational temperature of 65.8 into, so now I can write down the atomic mass unit exactly just to make 4 by
into 1.6605 to 10 to the power of minus 27 whole square into 1.05 to 10 to the power of minus 27 the conversion units okay so this is the molecular the atomic weight of h and this is for d so h plus d by h into d multiplied by their conversion factor so if you simplify this you will again get close to 0 0.738 into 10 raised to the power of minus 10 meters which is equal to 0 0.738 Armstrong. Now you see these three values you have here it's 0 0.739 again 0 0.739 again 0 0.738. So all the bond lengths whether it is hydrogen, deuterium or hydrogen and deuterium combined it is same. So that is what it says the isotopic species the bond lengths are same. So bond lengths are same means so obviously uh, it, the assumption is correct. Now let us see the force constant the second part of our question that is the force constant. So for the force constant we will start with the vibrational temperature. So it will be theta v h nu by k this you must be knowing this expression. So what I am going to do is I am writing in terms of the reduced mass. So if I write it down in reduced mass so this is frequency k will be as it is the frequency is the reduced mass under root of reduced 1 by m. So 1 by so let, let me write out the expression here first 2 pi root of kf m1 plus m2 by m1 m2. So essentially it is nothing but the frequency is 1 upon 2 pi root of k by mu this is the frequency calculation. So frequency for the bond length will be k by mu, mu is the reduced mass, so reduced mass is m1 into m2 by m1 plus m2. So now what we will do, we will try to find out what is k or kf in this case. So we will try to square this term, so it will be theta v square equals to h by 2 pi k, h by 2 pi k whole square into kf into k into m1 plus m2 by m1 m2 okay so that i can write a expression which is kf kf equal to 2 pi k by h whole square to theta v square into the reduced mass that is m1 into m2 by m1 plus m2 okay so i want to get k here so kf and k is the same thing so kf i have taken everything to that side left hand side right hand side only kf remains so this is the expression now let us see the put up all the constants so that we can uh, complete this so kf then becomes 2 into pi into 1.38 to 10 raised to the power of minus 23 by 6.62 into 10 raised to the power of minus 34 whole squared into theta v square into m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. So this gives an expression which is equal to 1.713 to 10 to the power of 22 into theta v square by m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. So again we will take the variable specific to the species and compute the force constant. Let us say we do it for hydrogen first, hydrogen so k will be equals to 1.713 to 10 raised to the power of 22 into so now the vibrational temperature of hydrogen is 6320 square into then the reduced masses I am taking it from there so it will be 1.6735 10 raised to the power of minus 27 by 2. So this brings a value of 572.67 Newton per meter. So this is the force constant. So here I have kept the m1 m it is a product of 1 into 1 multiplied by their conversion constants whole square and I have get 1 plus 1 into 
conversion constant. So one of the conversion constant get cancels out, so one remains. So that is the factor which is there in the numerator. So if you simplify the expression, you will get. Similarly, for the D2, K will be again same 1.713 into 10 raised to the power of 22 into then the expression for this 4490 is the vibrational temperature whole square. Now again I will add up the atomic masses of both 1.6605 so it is 1 plus 1 by 2. So this if you simplify you will get close to 577.613 Newton per meter and finally for HD K is given as 1.713 into 10 raised to the power of 22 into now you have a vibrational temperature for HD as 5500 so that is whole squared and you get the values 1.00784 into 2.014 into this constant so there will be again one of the constant at the top because other things will then and you will add these plus 2.014 so one of the constant gets cancels out so you had one of the constant at the top so h and d so you have taken h plus d is this much so this plus this equal to this into this so here also if you see i have added uh, 2 plus 2 ultimately you get 2 here so i have taken the average of this so finally if you solve for this you will get the force constant as 578.12 newton per meter so if you notice the force constant for all the three species they are almost same so it means both the assumptions are correct that is for isotonic species the force constants as well as the equilibrium bond lengths are actually equal so that is what the assumption we have to prove and we have proved this assumption by correlating the rotational temperature with the moment of inertia and the vibrational temperature with the frequencies so from there we obtain the bond lengths and the force constant okay so this was a very basic problem the idea was to make you understand that you can use this rotational and vibrational temperature to compute the bond lengths and force constant. So let us look at the second illustration. The rigid rotor approximation we have already seen the expression which we have derived earlier in this lecture. So now the question says a more realistic model is to include the first term in an expansion to account for the fact that due to centrifugal forces the molecule stretches slightly with increasing rotational motion. It means when you have a rotational motion, the molecule will stretch due to the centrifugal forces. This is now accounted by including the first term in expansion about the rigid rotor model, where this term, this particular variable is a small constant. So now I am changing the value of the energy from this rotational at j level to an additional term which is given by minus j square j into plus 1 whole square, where j equal to 0, 1, 2. So our question says, now we have to find out what is the rotational partition function in this case when you have the expression as above. So how do we do it? So you know Q rotational is equal to summation of J goes from 0 to infinity then 2J plus 1 into exponential of E This is the expression. So, if the rotational energy now is given as j into j plus 1 theta r minus into j square whole square. Okay. So, this is the expression we have given. So now we have to include this expression in this first equation 1 and see what is the effect in the rotational partition function. So uh, we get the rotational partition function as if we substitute this expression as goes from j goes from 0 to infinity to j plus 1 then exponential 
of minus j into j plus 1 theta r by t plus then by t into j square by j plus 1 whole square okay this expression now at a high temperature you can reduce the formation to a integral so if you do that you can write down a integral of rotational as 0 to infinity 2j plus 1 then exponential of minus j to j plus 1 theta r by t plus j square j plus 1 whole square into dj ok. So, the rotational term I have to then reduce it further if I want to reducing I have to substitute j into j plus 1 as x let us convert everything in terms of x. So, you will get the final rotational partition function as 0 to infinity exponential of minus x theta r by t plus to t into x square into dx. If you do that you will get minus half you will have to convert into error function minus pi upon exponential minus theta r by t whole square ok by 1 minus error function of minus theta r by t by 2 of square root of minus eta. So, I am not going into the details of this error function you can I am leaving it for you. So, this is the way you have to find the modified rotational energies. So, the third illustration here what I have done is I have asked you to calculate the entropy heat capacity gives free energy for nitrogen and hydrogen bromide at temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar ok. The first electronic state is non degenerate for both gases the characteristic temperature and dissociation energy for nitrogen is given as theta r 2.89 and theta v 3390 and dissociation energy as 9.76 volt. So, you are given three things the cash temperature means we are given the rotational temperature, vibrational temperature and the dissociation energies. The molecular weight is for nitrogen is 28 and the symmetry factor is 2 sigma is 2. The characteristic temperatures and dissociation energy for hydrogen bromide is 12.23820 and 3.75 electron volt respectively. So, the molecular weight for this particular compound hydrogen bromide is 80.9 gram per mole, but the symmetry factor is only 1. So, why it is 1? Because it is HBr, there is only one way you can have a orientation H and Br, you cannot have two ways of doing it. So, that is. So, let us see how we can calculate this, it is pretty much simple, but let me just check out how you want to proceed with the calculation elaborately. So, let us write the expression for chemical potential mu by kT, this we have already seen earlier. So, it will be ln upon actually it is minus ln upon bracket you have 2 pi m k t by h square to the power of 3 by 2 and then v by n and then t into sigma of theta r into omega electronic exponential d naught by k t by 1 minus exponential minus theta v by t ok this expression. Now, if I ask you to compute the chemical potential most of the students what they will do ok I have these values fine I will just substitute all these. No, you will fall in a problem because the issue is if you see exponential d naught. Now, d naught upon k t or d naught upon k will be such a huge value it will not show up in your calculator you will be finding problem answers will be erroneous or it will show no result. 
To avoid that, take the ln terms separately and then substitute the values rather than substitute the values at one go. So what it means is I will separate out the translational term, rotational term. This omega electronic for ground state degeneracy you can assume to be unity. So this become one. So do not worry about this term. And then you take another term when you apply ln on it, it will be only d naught by kt and then minus of this term 1 minus exponential ln of this term. So, you will have 4 terms in this. So if I want to write it down the 4 the four different terms you will get. So, you will get minus of ln 2 pi m k t by h s square into 3 by 2 into v by n. Okay. This is one term plus ln of so actually the entire thing is inside the bracket so I mean it does not change much so maybe uh, what I will do is that I will remove this bracket and uh, this is minus so suppose I keep a bigger one outside and this the second bracket inside so this is one ln term then the other ln term is uh, let us this this is the other ln term ln of t upon sigma theta r okay this is the other ln term then this term will be as it is because when log applies on this exponential term this will be as it is noticing this fact that omega down straight degeneracy is unity and then so this is will be as it is from this is writing like this and you will get another term because it is in the denominator we will have a negative sign so negative of ln Again, I will make another bracket here 1 minus exponential of minus theta v by t. So, this is the entire term. Okay. So, you can compute these terms. Let us suppose this is term 1 with this v by n. This is term 2. this is term 3 okay. and the overall this as term 5 and let us suppose this as term 4. So, now let us see what are these different terms and then we add up. So, you substitute all the values in term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, do it explicitly then put it inside the expression. Never put all the variables inside the expression, try to do it in a single go, then you will be having errors. So, if you do that and then similarly in the same manner, you can also get the entropy expression because ln of here also same thing ln of 2 pi m k t by h s square you will be having well there is to 3 by 2 into v by n ln of this expression plus ln of t upon sigma into theta r another equation here plus 7 by 2 plus ln of round straight by 1 minus exponential into minus theta v by t. Okay. So, the expressions are pretty much similar. So, only thing is you have another term here which is plus plus theta v by t into exponential of minus theta v by t by 1 minus exponential of minus theta v by t ok. So, now you will have uh, this uh, term 1 is same as term 1 the previous expression term 2 is also same as previous expression. Now, you have some new terms which you have to compute that is and again this one this term is also similar minus ln of this term is same as for the chemical potential. Here you have another term which is term 6 this one term 6. 
So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms I have already shown, this is the 6th term. So, if you compute these terms separately, you will be able to find out all the required properties. So, obviously, this becomes, if you compare the previous expression, it will be term 1 plus term 2 plus 7 by 2 minus term 5, because it is minus because it is the numerator this numerator becomes unity and denominator goes up, it becomes minus, so minus term 5 plus this term 6, okay. And then you will have Cv by Nk, so just take the internal energy derivative with respect to temperature, this will become 5 by 2 plus theta V by 2T whole square into 1 upon sin hyperbolic of theta v by 2t whole square, okay. And so, Cp by nk will be then 5 by 2 plus theta v by 2t into 1 by sin hyperbolic theta v by 2t whole square plus 1, okay. The expressions both will give you Cv and Cp. So, you have expression for chemical potential, for entropy, for Cv and Cp. So, now just substitute all the term 1, term 2, term 3, term 5 separately. So, you will then come to the results which is, for example, you will have in this case the term 1 as equal to 15.58 this is I am doing for nitrogen, so for nitrogen only, yeah. remaining for HBr you can do it, for nitrogen term 1 is this, so this term 2 will be, so term 1 just term 2 is equal to 3.9427, for term 3 it will be d naught by kt which is equal to uh, D naught just want to show you something, this is D naught by kT, please convert it into joules. So, it will be 9.76 into 1.602 into 10 raised to the power of minus 19, 10 raised to the power of minus 19 by 1.38 into 10 to the power of minus 23 into 298 Kelvin that is the system of temperature of interest. So, this will be close to 380.09. Then term 4 is very simple, term 4 is nothing but theta v by t. So, for it for nitrogen it will be 3390 by 298, so this will be 11.37 and term 5 will be ln of 1 minus exponential of minus theta v by t which is equals to 1 minus exponential of minus 11.37 which we obtained from the previous term 4. So, this will be close to 1.146 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Now, we come to term 6. So, that is theta v by t that is 11.37 into exponential of minus theta v by t again it will be minus 11.37 by 1 minus exponential of minus theta v by t again minus 11.37. So, this comes to a factor of 1.4964 into 10 raise to the power minus 9. Okay. So, these are different terms, term 1, term 2. So, in order to make it simple, we also need to have the volume. So, what is the volume? Volume you know is nothing but V equal to P V is equal to R T. So, P V is equal to R T by P. So, it means R is you know 8.314, you need to have the volume also into the temperature 298. 10 to the power of minus 5 because I have taken this units in a bar R value by pressure that is 1 atmosphere. So, this will give you volume of 0 0.0248 centimeter cube. 
okay. So, once you have the volume, so term 1 related to the translational uh, factor and term 2 is nothing but uh, ln of, uh, if you see it is ln of, just want to make it uh, much more explicit here, okay. T is system temperature, sigma is 1, uh, sigma will be 2 for nitrogen, theta r is the rotational temperature for nitrogen. Term 1 well, I am not writing, we have done it many times, it is the translational partition function where you require the volume to be inserted then divided by the Avogadro's number V by n into the 2 pi m k t by h square. So, now you substitute all the values, so you will get mu by k t. minus of term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3 minus term 5 this minus 399.62 joules per mole and then you will we have s by n k is equal to term 1 plus term 2 plus 7 by 2 minus term 5 plus term 6. If you do that, you will get a value of 23.03 .03 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay. I am not writing the units, you can write yourself and then the Cp will be Cp by Nk, Cp by Nk will be 2.5 into 11.37 because it is theta v by t whole square whole square into 1 upon sin hyperbolic of 11.37 by 2 whole square plus 1. So, this will be 3.505. So, you got all the values the chemical potential, the entropy and the specific heat capacity. So, once you do this, you can also do it for HBr, I can leave that as an assignment for you, you can complete that. So, we will go to the last problem. The so, question is, determine the constant volume and constant pressure heat capacities for an ideal linear triatomic gas in the limit T approaches 0, okay. A corollary to the third law of thermodynamics is that the heat capacity of a material in the perfect crystalline state should be 0 at absolute 0. Is the result you obtain consistent with the third law of thermodynamics? So, you are asked to find out the constant volume and the constant pressure heat capacity for a triatomic gas, ideal linear triatomic gas. So, we are told that at perfect 0, it will be 0, heat capacity is 0. Is it true? So, have to see what is that value. So, let us try to prove that. So, we know that C V upon C V upon N K the values are equal to 5 by 2 plus theta V by T whole square by T by 1 minus E. Okay. This is the expression. So, it means as T approaches 0, so we have to find what is the value of the right hand side when T approaches 0, that is what the question. So, as T approaches 0, if you see e to the power of minus theta V by T also approaches 0 or this entire term 1 minus e to the power of minus theta V by T, this will approach what? 1 because if this is 0, the denominator approaches 1. So, it means C V upon N K is approaching towards 5 by 2 plus a expression which is a product of the square of theta V by T whole square into e to the power of minus theta V by T. Okay. Now, if you write theta V by T as x, as x, so it means C V by N K takes the value of 5 by 2 plus x square into e to the power of minus x. Now, this term, this product term just c, this x square e to the power of minus x, okay. So, it will approach 0. This entire term, if you notice carefully, this will approach 0 as x approaches, approaches infinity. 
because you because what is x? x is equal to theta v by t. So, t is smaller and smaller and smaller. So, it means x is approaching infinity. So, if x approaches infinity, so this x square into e to the power of minus x. So, e to the power of minus infinity. So, overall this term is equal to close to 0. So, whatever you multiply with this 0 is equal to 0. So, this entire term approaches 0. So, it means limit of C v as t approaches 0 is equal to 5 by 2 n k only ok, 5 by 2 n k. So, this is what we got from the assumption. Now, the issue is it is not equal to 0. In the question it is said that the heat capacity of a material in the perfect crystalline state should be 0. Now, it is not 0, but 5 by 2 into n k which implies that this ideal gas, why is it so? Why is it not equal to 0? Because it is written as a perfectly crystalline state. Is the gas a perfectly crystalline state? No, it is not a crystalline state. And the molecules are moving here and there rapidly. It is not crystalline. All the molecules are not specified with their direction or with their particular position. So, that is the reason it is never equal to 0. It will have some value. It will have some value. It is only 0 for a crystalline substance. So, this actually the corollary is wrong. So, the specific heat will not be equal to 0 in such a scenario. So, I will conclude my lecture. So, again I will request you to go through the Sandler's book for more details about how you compute the thermodynamic properties using the values given in the book and how you want to calculate by splitting the terms of these expressions of chemical potential entropy. That is very important. So, we conclude this gases, the ideal gases we have computed, the monoatomic, diatomic, polyatomic. Now, in the next uh, lecture, we will start with the chemical reactions in ideal gases. Thank you. Mm -hmm.